Amen. 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 Why I say whatever you need. God's got it. Whatever. Whatever you need. You need love. Right. You need peace. You need joy. You need happiness. God's got it. Whatever you need. God's got it. Honor and honor and praises unto God the Father, the Son, and to the blessed Holy Ghost. What a joy and a privilege it is to be in the house of the Lord Amen. one more time. Thank you. Amen. Another day that the Lord has blessed and kept me, and I'm so glad about so it. It's good to be here. Amen. Because it could have been the other way. Amen. I haven't been so good, nor perfect. I haven't crossed every T, nor dotted every I. Amen. But I'm so glad that's the songwriter said. For he looked beyond all my faults. And he saw my very need. It's a blessing, truly it's a blessing to be here. Because someone last night laid down. And didn't pray as I was listening. But the Lord touched me earlier this morning. To get a clothed in my right hand. And as I say, I learned as the, our foreparents used to say, with a reasonable portion of health yeah, and strength. Right, right. And it's good to be here. Yes, it is. It's good to be here yeah, with a reasonable right. portion of health and strength. Yes. Right. It'd be nice to run and jump like I did when I was 10 years old. Can't do that anymore. Right, right. But what I can do, I can do. And I thank God right. for it. Right. Right. One of the ministers yesterday said, Lord, use me. Use me up. Right. Yes. You know, don't leave here with something left undone. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Mm. If you can sing, sing. Amen. If you can preach, preach. Amen. If you can pray, pray. Amen. Whatever the Lord has given you to do, do it for His Amen. glory. Amen. All right. All right now. Amen. For God is worthy. To be praised. Right. Yeah. He's worthy of all the glory. Yes, he is. Give him praise and to honor to God the Father, the Son, and to the blessed Holy Ghost. We invite that you would turn with us to the book of Corinthians, chapter 2 Second Corinthians, chapter 12. Second Corinthians chapter 12. We are going to read two verses, two verses from chapter 12, and it says, And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmity, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distress for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Pray with us. Gracious Father, it's again that we come to say thank you. Father, we thank you for another day that you have allowed us to assemble in the house of worship. Father, we thank you for allowing us to stand once again, dear Lord, before these your children. Yes. Lord, we acknowledge that we are not able of ourselves, but Lord, we do ask that I will send the preacher, yes. the Holy Spirit, Lord, that it may use my tongue to preach your word, yes. use my mind as a storehouse of your wisdom. Yes. Let that same spirit abide with these your children that someone may profess. Jesus is Lord of their yes, life. Yes, this we do pray and we say thank you. Thank you. Thank In you. Jesus' Lord, name. Jesus. Amen. 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 You may be saved. 
day of the ninth verse of the twelfth chapter, you will find again these words, and he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. And we want to talk to you from the subject. Amazing grace. Amen. Right. Amazing grace. Turn your water down. And just that. Amazing grace. <clears throat> Continuing in our theme that we're trying to look at and focus for the year of 2020, a perfect vision. Continuing upon how 2020 we know is perfect vision. <coughs> Other roads, when you go to the doctor, they examine your eyes, and if you have anything less than 2020, they do as they have done with us. They want to prescribe glasses for us that we may be able to see a little clearer. Amen. Amen. Hmm. But we as in the household of faith. Sometimes our vision gets a little cloudy. Yes. Yes. Because, not because of God's imperfection, but because of our imperfection. Yes. Yes. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. See, we take our eyes off the prize. Amen. Right. Amen. We take our eyes off the focus the center focus of the church. Yes, that's right. Right. And the focus of the church is Jesus Christ. Yes, amen. For it was Jesus who died and suffered and died on the cross for your sin and for my sin. Amen. It was Jesus who was whipped, yes. spat upon, yes. mocked and abused. Yes. For your sins and my sins. All right, man. Yes. It was he who God sent down through 40 and two generations yes. to prepare a way yes. for us. Yes. Yes, Lord. From the day that God created Adam and Eve mm -hmm. and placed them in the garden, yes. man found a way and they failed. It wasn't just man falling, but Satan sent King and presented himself before man and persuaded Eve to partake of the forbidden fruit. Eve persuaded her husband. And when Adam ate of the fruit, sin entered into the world. That's right. And from that day until this day, God has been working to redeem us back to him. Amen. Now, when I say he's been working to redeem us back to him, it's working individually. Because when Christ died on the cross, Christ paid the redemption. We have already redeemed. Yes, yes, yes. But we need to accept him Jesus. as Lord and Amen. Savior. Amen. 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 Yes. Amen. Yes. There's something that we need to do. Amen. You know, Christ has already done enough. Yes. The choir has been encouraging us today to song, whatever you need, God's got it. Right. Whatever you want, God's got it. Amen. All you got to do is just ask him right now. God's got it all. And they, even, they even say that uh, I am so satisfied yes. with my Savior. Yes. The question is sometimes, are you really satisfied? Yes. That's right. That's right. You know, we, it's, we, we, can, we can keep looking for a blessing. Yes. Yes. But sometimes we look for a blessing so hard we forget, our, we forget how satisfied we already are. That's right. That's right. You know, the Lord woke you this morning. That's something to be thankful for. Yes, right. You gave it away with your head. That's Amen. something to be thankful Amen. for. Right. I know they may talk about it, but you know that's something to be thankful for too. Amen. When you can hear them talking about it, you know they're right. talking about it. Because one day they're going to reel you across this front altar here, and some are going to say good things, and some are going to say bad things. And you won't know a word about it. 
So you ought to find somewhere in your heart to say, I'm thankful that they still talking about me. When they say the good things, when they say the bad things, I'm thankful for all that the Lord has allowed me to go through. Because truly, even, even in him, did they pass me not no gentle Savior? While on others thou art calling, please don't pass me by. Right. We need the Lord just to stop by for yes, a little while. Yes, yes. Because I'm satisfied with what he does for me. You know, it's an interesting thing here today as we talk about amazing grace. See, amazing grace, uh, amazing. We know about grace. We, we, we talked about grace. Uh, those who have been around church for a little while, you've heard about grace. Young people, you may not understand what grace is, but grace is the unmerited favor of God. Amen. Amen. There's nothing that we do that earns this favor. Yes, that's right. And there is nothing that we can buy, mm -hmm. sell, yes. talk about, yes. present, yes. but it's God's grace, yes. the unmerited faith, yes. and the amazing grace is even in the midst of all our mess, yes. <coughs> He still offers yes, he that faith. Yes. 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 Right. Now, some of us. We show a little grace to some people. But when they fall out of favor with us, uh, sometimes they can never get back in favor with us. We just hold a grudge. We walk around. We see them coming down the street. We go across the street. All right? We see them in church, we sit on the other side. Sometimes we don't even go in because we don't want to be around. Right? And Lord have mercy if it's the preacher. We have a way and we think that we are okay. But there are people that just show indifference in their actions. They don't want to sing on the choir anymore. They want to sit on the deacon board, but they're not going to work anymore. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. They want to be part of the mother's board, but they're not going to work anymore. Jesus, Jesus. They'll sit in the pulpit, but they won't say amen when you preach it. They'll stand at the door, but if a certain individual comes in, they don't want to... Show them a smile. That's how man's favor works. But God's favor, again, the unmerited favor. Yes, yes. Nothing you can do to earn it. Right. Yes. Just give. Just give. Right. And if really, if you think about it, there's nothing you can do that can cause it to be lost. Jesus, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Let me preach it. Are you saying that none of us are lost? I didn't say that. Now. I say God's grace. There's nothing you can do because he's already presented. He's already given his son. That's all you got to do. Just receive him. Just receive him in. And the wonderful thing about it is, see, it's not lip service now. It's receiving yes. him in. Yes. Right. See, there's something about receiving Jesus Christ in. When you receive him in, he's going to touch your life. And I want to let you know right now, when God touches your life, somebody's going to see a change in your life. It's more than just saying, I have invited him in. But when you let him in, Brings about a change. You know, it's kind of like going to the, when the doctor prescribes you some medicine, you go down to the pharmacy there and you buy, you buy the medicine, you take it home and put it in the cabinet and you never take it. I, I, I'll share, I, I'll share, share this. Uh, uh, she don't like it, she'll tell me about it later. Mm. She'll tell me now. But, 
week a week ago, about a month ago, we really my wife had a physical and they, they you know when you go in there they check your ear. They say there's a little bill up in the ear there and they, you need to you need to we need to clean it out. So they set an appointment, follow up appointment for her to come back and they gave her a prescription for that D that uh, D box put in your ear. She said put it in your ears seven days. Start seven days before you come back so it'll be able to clean the wax out. When we went back to the doctor, the doctor said, boy, this, I can tell that you've been using the medicine. Because, say, it's easy to get the blockage out. Say, people come in here that's had the prescription, and they come in, you would believe how difficult it is to remove the blockage out of their ear. And we asked them, have you used the prescription? They said, we used it. They say, ain't no way they'll use that prescription. <laughs> If you buy it, put it on the shelf. If you just want to take Jesus, I'll, I'll, I'll bring, bring it home a little, little, little better for you. If you just take this Bible and just lay it on your coffee table at home, so that when everybody comes in, they say, oh, they have a Bible in their house. <laughs> they are Christians in that house. <laughs> They'll sell us just with a Bible laid on their table. Okay, let me let me move on now. Right, man. Read my Bible. You read it, and if you read it, one day the word is going to take hold of you. I promise you. Amen. Amen. It's like exercise. It's like exercise. If you get on that treadmill and walk. You see some results. Amen. Amen. So you take your Bible and you read it. Paul was said, talking, and we read this verse, uh, verse 9, but Paul was picked up in verse 7. He was talking about how Satan was buffeting him, how he was, how he was being worked on, how he was being, how he was being in trouble. And he even said that there was a thorn in his flesh that he had to deal with. But he said, I sought the Lord three times that it might depart. But the Lord said unto him, don't worry, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Amen. Paul looked and said, began to understand, well, if, I, the, the, if, if, if I'm stronger when I'm weakness, my strength comes from my weakness because the Lord is sufficient for me. The Lord is strengthening me. Paul began to say, well, I'm going to glory in my infirmity. All right. All right now. Here's where some of you are gonna look at me and say you're crazy today. But Paul already said that he look they I'll speak as a fool. So just hear me a little while and and, and do with me a little while just like you do fools. That's what Paul said. Yes. So wise. Yes. Go back to go back to chapter eleven and just just <coughs> yeah. Amen. There are so many people in the world today. Isn't it amazing? Think about it. Think about it. The contemporary songs that we hear. Songs used to praise and focus upon what God has done, how his grace, how his mercy, how he suffered and how he died for us. But think about the songs we hear in a contemporary nation. It focuses on all the riches and the glory. Oh, uh, Nicki Minaj say, I got more, I got more ice than uh, Gretzky. I've got this and I've got that. Talking about all the things that man looks at and says that you are good. But Paul said, I'm going to glory in my infirmities. When I'm sick. Yes. I'm going to praise God anyhow because in my weakness I'm strong. Paul said that when I was whipped, when I was abused, I'm a glory anyhow. Let me just go back to chapter 11 now because some of you think I'm just a little crazy though, right? But that's all right for the word 
word will bear out the truth yes, right now. Yes. Oh, from the second Corinthians and uh, chapter 11, Paul says that, that uh, uh, look at this, he says that I have, if, are there any servants of Christ? Mm -hmm. Verse 23 of chapter 11, and this is from the New International Version. Uh, just to break it down so you'll read, understand, you can read it in the King James Version or which uh, edition or whichever uh, uh, revision you have. But just look at it with me. Uh, their service of Christ. I'm out of my mind talking like this. I am more. I have worked much harder. Been in prison. More frequently, listen to this, Paul's been in prison, he's been flogged, he's been beaten, he's been exposed to death again and again. Church of a living God, if we were supposed to put in prison, if we was beaten if again and again, we would say, I'm going to give up. But on this, as we celebrate Dr. Martin Luther King holiday, we've got to think about Dr. King being placed in prison, being ostracized, being, he, being talked about all that he endured, but yet he still held on to the premises of nonviolent movement and church of a living God. We can walk in the newness of God if we hold on to the principles of God. But look at this. Paul says five. Right. Not once. Not twice. Not three times. Not four times. But five times I've been beaten. I've received 40 lashes. Minus one. Two one hundred and ninety-five wow. lashes. Wow. Mm. He received for the cause of Christ. Right. Jesus. Jesus. And you better not slap me one time. Right. <laughs> from yeah. bandits. I've been in danger from my fellow Jews, in danger from Gentiles, in dangers in the city, yeah. in dangers in the country, in dangers at sea, in dangers from false believers. Paul say, if it's happened, it's happened to me. But yet through it all, I've labored and tall and have gone often without sleep. I've known hunger, I've known thirst, I've gone without food, and I've been cold, and I've been naked. Besides everything else, I face daily the pressure of my concern for the church, church of a living God. You just don't know what I deal with. You don't know what every minister, what every pastor of the church have to deal with. Church of a living God, look at it this way. If you have a spouse, I have a spouse. If if you have children, I have children. If you have grandchildren, I have grandchildren. If you have a house bill, I have a house bill. I deal with all these, but yet I still face with the pressures of the church. I deal. I have to love one another. I have to pray for one another. But church of a living God, in the midst of all this, I thank God that I've learned that I can deal with every aspect of it because it my weakness when I call on God Almighty, He will come to my rescue. In my weakness, I found strength. First, you're a living God. That's why I've been able this year to pick up the phone and call on those on the sick list and pray with them. I thank God for giving me the energy. I thank God for giving me the strength. And if I hold on, yes, yes, yes. 
going to change your hand. He's going to make a way. Yes, it will. A man. Oh, yeah. Amazing grace. Yes. God's grace is sufficient. Yes. Church of a living God. You know, I don't want you to talk about me. I don't want you to scandalize my name. I don't believe anybody wants that in their life. But I want to let you know right now that even if that does happen, I want to let you know that in my weakness, God will strengthen me. And I want to let you know right now, Anderson Chapel, there are those that talk about us. Amen. There are those that scandalize our name. But I want to let you know that in our weakness, God's grace is sufficient for us right now. So I want to let you know, Anderson, what we need to do is come together, band together, intertwine together. Let's become a link of shame. The strongest link of a chain, the weakest, the, the chain is, is only as strong as the weakest link. So we need to strengthen ourselves right now. And the only way we can strengthen ourselves is by reading the word of God, prayer and supplication. Church of a living God, it does not matter. It does not matter right now whether you're in Wednesday night Bible study or noon day Thursday Bible study or you come in on Saturday Bible study. Church of the living God, all love is supposed to work for the strengthening of Anderson chapter. I know that every member of the Bible study both on those days may not be Anderson chapel, but the word of God ought to touch somebody heart. When we come on Sunday morning or Sunday school, we ought to be studying the Word of God, strengthening one another. When the preacher preached, it ought to be strengthening one another. Church of a living God, because in our weakness, right? We're made strong. When we hold on to God's unchanging hand. Therefore, I take pleasure. In repose, yes. in necessity, yes. in persecution, yes. uh -huh. in distress, Jesus. for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, yes. then am I strong. Yes. Right. For God, we talked about Paul being whipped, mm -hmm. being beaten. Right. How many times he suffered, but yet he still stayed strong. Yes. Even in the midst of all of Paul's suffering. Yes. There's still one thing Paul did not do. Jesus. But God called his only begotten son, yes, yes. Jesus the Christ, yes, yes. from heaven, from heaven down to earth. Yes. Seven through forty and two generations. Yes. Through the birth of a virgin baby. Yes. And he sent him down to the cross. Yes. That they're on the cross. Yes. They whipped him the night before. Yes. They placed him on the cross. Yes. Uh -huh. They nailed him in the hand. Yes. Nails in his feet. Yes. Yes. They spears yes. him in his side. Yes. A yes. crown of thorns yes. placed on his head. Yes. They yes. spat upon him. Yes. They mocked him. Yes. They did all sorts yes. of yes. Yes. things yes. against yes. him. But Christ saved them from the cross. He looked and said, Father, forgive yes. them. For they yes. know yes. not yes. what yes. they yes. do. Yes. And church shall live in God. Jesus. He still Saying, forgive yes, us right yes, now, yes, 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 for we are still lost. But church of a living God, yes, I want to let you know that you can be saved here yes, today yes, because yes, God I, sent His only yes, begotten yes, Son. Yes, and yes, church of a living God, yes, they took Him off the cross. They took him off the cross. They laid him in the tomb. Yes. He stayed there three days. Yes. He died up on Sunday oh, yes. morning yes. with all power oh, in his oh, hand. Oh, and church of oh, the living God, all you got to do is just accept him yes. as yes. Lord and Savior. Yes. And then you can experience that amazing grace. The songwriter picked it up and said something like this. Amazing grace shall always be my song of praise. Right. For it was grace that brought my liberty. I do not know just why he came to love me so. He looked beyond my faults and saw my need. I shall ever lift my eyes to Calvary to view the cross where Jesus died for me. How marvelous the grace that caught my fallen soul. He looked beyond my faults 
and saw my need. Oh, yes, Church, your yes. living God, he looked beyond your lives. Yes. He looked along beyond your adultery. He looked beyond your backside. He looked beyond your your drinking. He looked beyond your, your drug use. He looked beyond your murders. He looked beyond all your fault. And he saw your need. And the need was. Jesus. We need a Savior. Amen. 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 And he sent Jesus. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amazing grace. Name, Thank you. Yes. How sweet the sound. Yes. The Savior. A rich like that. Yes, yes. I once was lost. Was lost. Now I'm found. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That brings us back to our fame for the year again. Improve your vision. Yes, Do better. It was grace, grace. that gives you that vision yes, to see. Yes, yes. Somebody today. Thank you, Jesus. You have been wondering, you've been dealing with so many things. You've been looking at all that's happened in your life. You've asked yourself the question, why have I had to deal with these things? But go home and just read that 11th chapter of 2 Chronicles and look at all that Paul endured. Yes. yes. But yet he said, if I'm a fool, I'm a fool for Christ. Yes. I'm going to trust you. Yes. Because when I'm weak, then I'm strong. Yes. For God's grace is sufficient. Yes. Amazing grace. Yes. Do you need God's grace today? Yes. I don't know if you need it, but I know I need it. See, because I'm a sinner saved by yes, grace. Yes, thank you, Lord. The choir is going to give us a selection of their choice. We are seeing the invitation today, and there should be one. If you've been calm and accept the grace that God has offered, He offers it freely to each and every one of us. He don't look and just say, I give it to the male, nor just to the female. It's not just to the old or just to the young. Not to the black or just to the white. Not to the rich or just to the poor. But he gave it freely to all those that would seek him. As the shepherd shall say, let us stand. Amen. 